Hi, folks. Matt Noyce, Tuesday Insights. We have so much to cover here. It's going to be a little bit longer one, but if you love meteorology, you're going to find out everything that's driving everything we're thinking about over the next coming days. First of all, the rain was epic across parts of the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. Between radar estimates, actual reports from cooperative observer sites, what came down was over eight inches of rain just north of St. Johnsbury, Vermont. We had a larger area of about four to six inches of rain that came down. This resulted in multiple road and state highway washouts across the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. Grafton County, New Hampshire getting hit hard as well. Now, a lot of us didn't pick up that much rain in the remainder of the area, but that was localized as you got right under the center of atmospheric energy up aloft, an upper level storm that was overhead. Plus, you had the mountains that were certainly enhancing some of that rain as it came down as well. That disturbance moves along, but we've still got another one coming at us. I talked more about today already um, in our One Degree Outside Today video that's posted at our website, OneDegreeOutside.com. But look, the bottom line is we've got another storm center coming at us. There's a warm front here, another surge of humidity and warmth coming over the next Next couple of days. As for today, there is the chance for some severe storms across northern New England. You can see the additional rainfall amounts are not anything like what we had during the overnight last night, but an isolated severe storm in terms of damaging wind is a possibility in the North Country over the course of our Tuesday afternoon, which brings us into the dew point forecast because that dew point is cranked up. We have the humidity. The abundance of humidity makes actually torrential rain a bigger concern going into Wednesday. We'll talk about that, but you can see that high humidity, the high dew point that's with us really all the way up to the upcoming weekend. This will impact the Pan Mass Challenge riders. Then you get a little bit more variation, some bigger swings as we head into next week, uh, particularly once we start getting along to the second half of that 14-day forecast. You start to see those drops that take place. So here comes the humidity as we get into tomorrow. Tomorrow, another surge of it. It's already here, obviously, but another surge deeper into the atmosphere that comes into play. This produces not only scattered showers in the morning, they become more numerous as we get out through the midday with the timestamp in the upper left. But certainly the time of greatest concern will be our Wednesday afternoon into evening and the first part of the night. A couple of reasons for that. Obviously, we're very much touch and go in northern New England after the amount of rain we picked up already. The atmosphere is loaded with moisture, so anything that develops will be some torrential downpours with the potential for localized flash flooding. And the other part of this is is you're in a little bit of a precarious situation here because you're in between the warm front and the cold front. You tend to find some rotating winds in here, so we'll have to watch for rotating updraft storms that may start to spin inside of this in the course of the later day Wednesday and Wednesday evening. By Thursday, cold front comes through, but watch what it does. It kind of stalls right over us here. So there still is the chance for a widely scattered storm on Thursday afternoon in southern New England. By Friday, that front is ready to come back. It wants to come back with moisture and humidity again. And we think Saturday is going to be a day where you may get a shower in the morning, a little break around the midday, and then more showers and thunderstorms again with some heavy rainfall as we get into the afternoon. So we'll be watching that Pan Mass Challenge riders. I think the best thing you could hope for is that if most of the action bubbles up in the afternoon. Maybe you get out ahead of those storms in the early going on Saturday. But again, there may be some showers around in that morning time anyway. Meanwhile, in the tropics, the 60% chance of development from the National Hurricane Center. But you look at the satellite and say, there's nothing there. <laughs> what are they talking about, right? Uh, if we zoom in a little bit more, we come into the Bahamas. This is the zone that has that 60% chance of development. Uh, and this would be as we get out toward the end of the week and the weekend. So what's the setup? Look, the setup is this. Right now, you've got a bunch of Saharan dust. When you get that dust, that's dry air in the atmosphere. So that's why nothing's developing right now. But the disturbance is there. And as that disturbance starts to outrun the Saharan dust, it gets into what we're going to color in red here, which is more favorable conditions for tropical development. And that becomes the concern, is that as we get to the end of the week and it outruns the dry air, that's more of an issue for us. I want to show you the jet stream as we head into the upcoming weekend and that storm nears the coast. Now, look. Whether the storm is where you see it here or down over the Bahamas, the bottom line is the same, which is we have this window of opportunity along the entire eastern seaboard where you can see the jet stream winds aloft are pumping right up the coastline, right? I don't think the storm is in a position where it can capitalize on that by the time we get to the early weekend. And that window closes pretty quickly here in New England. Watch what happens. Big disturbance comes in at the jet stream level. The westerlies come overhead, and they're fast by the time we get to Monday. And so usually when you see a setup like this, I certainly can't guarantee it from days out. Right, But when you see a setup like this, usually what this means is you're going to end up either with a storm that goes so, so, so far south that it misses the westerly influence entirely, or you're getting a recurvature, uh, which means it comes up and turns back out. Um, in this case, I certainly wouldn't be comfortable for folks from the Bahamas and Florida running up to the outer banks of North Carolina. 
here in New England, I feel a bit more comfortable, at least at this early juncture, with the fact that if this forecast verifies and you get this kind of westerlies, very, very difficult to get the storm to come in unless it were to slow down so much that it missed that, those westerly winds. Um, so there's still some uncertainty there, but that's kind of the deeper dive on what we're looking at and why at this point I'm not going, oh, no, sound the alarms. We'll see what happens with it. Okay, in the meantime, highs tomorrow are going to be running in the 80s. Remember, the air is rich with moisture and humidity, which is why more and more showers and storms tend to bubble up the deeper into the day that you go, and some of them may produce some of the locally uh, uh, flooding rainfall in spots. Once we get out in a Wednesday night, you still have the humidity. It'll be coming down in northern New England. So Thursday's chance of showers is less in the north country. Southern New England, still a few storms going to bubble up because look at the high temperatures on Thursday, coming up to about 90 degrees. Friday's not a lot different. I still think we're talking about a lot of warmth that's in place. Now, the clouds that come in may be able to keep the temperature down a little bit in spots. But remember, those clouds are coming with returning humidity anyway when you get across southern New England. And by the time we get to Saturday, that's going to be probably an unsettled day. There may be that shower in the morning a little break in the action, and then a better chance that you're probably going to bubble up showers and storms again as you get toward the course of the afternoon. Meanwhile, I want to let you know that if you would like to download our app and get the 14-day forecast for your location, it's on the Apple App Store and on Google Play. This was a little bit longer insights, but there was a lot of weather to cover, and I hope you found it fascinating if you like the science of meteorology. I hope you have a great rest of your day, too. We'll always see you with updates through OneDegreeOutside.com.